It is safe to say, influential statistics is the skill for the boardroom. Most of the time, our aim is to make conclusion, but data analysts and data scientists often jump into conclusion. It is not enough to have knowledge of statistics. You must know how to apply it. That is why applied statistics is the thing and not just knowledge of statistics. A lot of people have taken statistic courses online on YouTube or any other online platform and all they could take from it is knowledge of statistical terms and not even how to apply it. It is not your fault. Statistics is simple but tricky. As a graduate of statistics and experienced data analyst and scientist, I'm going to teach you and walk you through the statistics you need to know. Here is a short lecture to help you understand and identify the statistics you need to know. And I promise to keep this really simple. Statistics is divided into two. You could actually make it more than that, but let's keep it still simple. Descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Of course, descriptive statistics is what you do whenever you build your dashboard. You create the chart, create the table. That's actually descriptive statistics. I'm trying to make it more relatable to you. And whenever you do descriptive statistics, you calculate what we call, you know, mean, median, and mode, you know, or whatsoever sum, average, whatsoever statistics you are calculating. Dimension statistic? All right, let's, let's, let's make it simple now. Anytime you calculate mean, median, mode, or any numbers, it is either a statistic or a parameter. A statistic is a numerical description about a sample, while a parameter is numerical description about a population. And let me just make it so simple for you. Anytime you calculate mean, median, or mode, for example, and the data you use to calculate it is the entire data, which is population, then that is parameter. But anytime you calculate your regular mean, median, and mode, and the data you use is a sample, then that is statistic. And we're going to talk about this now. Most of the time, our data is sample. As a data scientist or as a data analyst or you know, data professional that actually work with data, most of the data you use are sample. And I'm going to explain this now. This is because it is difficult to work with population. It's difficult to get access to population in many instances. Why is it difficult to work with population or to get population? Number one, it could be very disruptive. There are some scenarios where taking the entire population is disruptive. If you cook a soup, pot of soup, and you want to test if the soup is actually delicious or not, if it's salty or not, will you lick the entire soup? Because that's the population. And based on the test you want to carry out, if you have to lick the entire soup before you can make a conclusion if it's delicious or salty, you have destroyed the entire thing. It's gone. So in that scenario, you can't take the entire population. You take a sample. And there are many other instances where you literally have to work with sample and not the population because the test is descriptive. In manufacturing industry, for example, you can't test everything. You take a sample of what has been manufactured and test them. Because some things, when you test them, you've used them. So if you have to test everything, then you have to use everything. It becomes destructive. So in scenario like that, you always end up using sample and not population. So don't forget point number one. Getting access to the population can be very destructive and this is why you go ahead and take sample. Number two, getting access to population is very expensive in many scenarios. For example, let's look at national population sensor. You know, in Nigeria, we had the last one maybe about 20 years ago or maybe more than that, that we have the last population sensor. So you must have the money, the resources to pull into it before you can take that kind of population. In many scenarios, for you to take the entire population, it costs a lot and you rather want to go for sample. Number three, time. It takes longer time to compute, to gather, and more resources very intensive. I just mentioned three reasons, right? Point number four, it is almost impossible to get population in many scenarios. And I'm going to go back to that same national population sensor, which is an exercise to count the number of citizens in the country, both you know, those residents and those not. I think there's a way to assess those that are not residents. But let's even speak to those residents. There are many reasons why it could be impossible. What if someone is not around? What if someone did not opt in to be counted? As simple as that, my son, the moment your population is reduced by one, it is no longer population. It is sample. Yes. If it is not everything, it is not population. Even with a single role, a single data set, then it is no longer a population. 
So you see, in many scenarios, what we think is population has actually been sampled. OpenAI ChatGPT was actually trained on sample data, not population. Yes, because they do not get access to every data possible. There are some that are written on paper that are not even on the internet. They don't get access to that. So you see, the fact that the sample does not mean it is small. It could actually be as big as what was used to train OpenAI ChatGPT. But the reality is this, the moment it is less one, then there's no longer population, it is sample. And that emphasizes why in some scenario, it is practically impossible to take the population. Does that mean we've been doing sample sensor in Nigeria? I mean, not population sensor. Maybe, maybe not. That's a joke, by the way. I have explained four different reasons why working with population might be impossible or not advisable, and why people go with sample. But let's relate this to what you do as a data analyst or data scientist. I'm going to mention three scenarios. Anytime you write a SQL query, you're already taking sample because you are selecting from something, which is the population. You are selecting a sample from it. So naturally, you're working with sample. Number two, anytime you clean your data, you definitely eliminate one or two rows or something or a column. It is automatically a sample and no longer population. Even if what you started with is the population. Anytime you do transformation, you have already reduced, reducing your data, doing all those things. You have literally reduced from population to sample. So let's say this right. What we use or what we work with as data is actually sample. Why am I saying all this? I'm trying to help you understand the real application of the statistic you've been taking as a course. Because we are working with sample, you dare not jump to conclusion. Yes, because it is wrong. There are many things you need to do before you can make a conclusion. I'm not even saying jump into conclusion. So, let's see. What are the things you need to do? And that is what influential statistics mean. It is that aspect of statistics that is specialized in helping you understand the assumptions that must be satisfied before you can use a particular statistical techniques to test the data and also how to interpret the result of your analysis. Either you are generalizing or you are not. It is influential studies that deals with that. So in most of the things you've done after building your dashboard, you don't do any other thing. You then start making, not start making conclusions, you start jumping into conclusion. Anytime you don't carry out influential statistics before you start making generalization from your data or from your result, then you are jumping into conclusion. Inferential statistics is a step ahead of descriptive statistics because you must have calculated descriptive statistics before you can now start checking if you can make conclusion about them or not. So after you've done your calculation, you then go ahead and test if you can make a conclusion, if you can make a generalization from that sample or not. It is until your result is statistically significant before you can make a conclusion. Remember. I'm not saying jump into conclusion. Even when your result is statistically significant, that doesn't mean you should jump into conclusion because there are still exemptions. There are level of confidence to what conclusion you are making, not the one you are jumping into. Because anytime you jump into conclusion, it's like you are seeing it's represent, which is not so. Interestingly, inferential statistics is what you use whenever you are doing storytelling. Anytime you are making presentation to the stakeholders or to your team, that is where you touch inferential statistics. Because on your dashboard, all you have there is descriptive statistics. And it is when you are making conclusions that people actually respect what you've done. So it is important that you have this skill and knowledge of how to apply inferential statistics before you start jumping or making conclusions. It is safe to say, inferential statistics is a skill for the boardroom. So that's what you use when you are talking to stakeholders, when you are engaging your stakeholders, when you are sharing your results, you are making presentations. Any mistake to jump into conclusion, people will know that. Why are you making that kind of assumption? But when you make a conclusion, they will know your thought process. They will know that you've done a test. They will know you have checked if something is significant or not. They, you'll be able to talk to them through that process and not jump to the conclusion. Here are some of the influential statistic concepts or tests that you will learn you know, as a beginner or someone who wants to know that part of statistics. You, know, you learn about point estimation and interval estimation, chi-square test, one sample t test, independent sample t test, one-way analysis of variance, correlation and regression, and many more. I mean many more. 
My goal is to help you understand statistics better. Not just to understand, but understand so that you can apply them to what you do. And this is why I've created a free statistic course. Practical course for you to learn how to apply this knowledge. Remember, it is applied statistics and not just knowledge of statistics. All the concepts about descriptive statistics that I just mentioned, all of them are covered in this video. And it's all for free. So, check the link in the video description and click on it to watch the video. Or you can even click on the link above right here to watch this course and practice alongside. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this. And I want to ask you something. Share this video right now with a friend or colleague you think will find it useful or helpful. Don't delay because you might forget. Thank you.